In this video, we're in Microsoft Excel. We're going to show you how to create a copy of a file using a VBA macro. Now, my scenario is I've got an invoice template, which is a macro enabled workbook. When I click on this Save Invoice button, what it's going to do is generate a workbook containing this invoice, but save it as a normal Excel workbook. The file name is going to be based on the invoice number and the company name. And you can actually see up here that I already have one invoice in the folder that I've specified for the macro to save my invoices. And that's based on a previous invoice number and company name. So if I click on Save Invoice Now, it's going to create a file called 1008-Second Logistics Limited. You can see that's happened up here. It also tells me what my next invoice number should be. When I click on OK, it actually puts that invoice number in the template for me, saves the template so I'm ready to go for the next invoice. So if I wrote third logistics limited in here, click on save invoice. As you'd expect, it creates that file for me in this folder. If I open these files up, you can see they are normal Excel workbooks, but it's also got rid of that Save Invoice button. OK, let's see how we can do this. Now, first things first, you will need your invoice or whatever document it is already set up. I'm using an invoice as my example, but this might work for loads of different scenarios. You've got to save this as a macro enabled workbook. So if you go to File, Save As, Navigate to where you're going to save this document. Give it a name. I'll call this invoice template demo. And make sure that you save your workbook as macro enabled. Click on Save. Now the next step is to show the developer tab on your ribbon. That is hidden by default. So if you can't see it on your ribbon, just right click on one of the other tabs, go to customize the ribbon. And then down here on the right hand side, there's an option for developer. You need to make sure that's ticked. Click on OK. So on the developer tab, go to the insert button under ActiveX controls, click on the command button button, and then draw your button. Next, you want to double click on that button and that will open up the Visual Basic Editor. Just maximize it. You need to see the Properties window for the button. Mine is open by default, but if you can't see it, just go to View, Properties window. And then in the Caption property, you can write some text that you want to appear on the button. So I'm going to say Save Invoice. And if I minimize the Visual Basic Editor, you can see now it's got that text. I'll go back to the Visual Basic Editor. Now I'm just going to explain the steps that the macro needs to execute. First step would be to create a copy of the invoice sheet in a new workbook. Second step, save the new workbook to the specified invoice folder with the proper file name. And that file name, if you remember, is the invoice number followed by the company number or the customer number. And we need to make sure we save it as an .xlsx file. Third step, close the new invoice file. Then display a message box with the new invoice number, with the next invoice number. Then update the invoice number on the template. And then lastly, save updates to template. And the only update really is the invoice number. So the first thing I'm going to do is declare three variables. First one is called path. Store that as a text string. And path is going to be equal to the path 
where I want to save my invoices. Now I've already got that on my clipboard. It needs to go in quotation marks. And please make sure you have that closing backslash at the end of your path. Second variable is going to be for the invoice number as long and invoice number equals, well, if I go back to my invoice, the invoice number is in D3. So I can say range D3. And then the last variable, I'm going to call F name, file name, store that as a string. Now the file name of the new invoice that I'm creating is a concatenation of the invoice number and the customer name. So file name equals invoice number, which I've already created a variable for. Concatenate that with, well, I have a dash between the two values, range D5, which is where the customer number is stored. Okay, so I've got my three variables. I can now start these steps. So the first of which is to create a copy of the invoice sheet in a new workbook. Now I am aware that there is a method called save copy as. And you might think that that's going to be the easiest way to create a copy of the file every time I want to create an invoice. But the problem here is that I need to change the file type from macro enabled to normal Excel workbook.xlsx. Now, if you do use this method and specify that you want to create a normal Excel workbook, although it does create the file, the file is corrupt. And you'll get this message that says something like Excel cannot open the file because the file format or the extension is not valid. Verify that the file has not been corrupted and that the file extension matches the format of the file. It's not going to work in our scenario. So what we've got to do is essentially do the equivalent of right clicking on the sheet tab, going to move or copy move to a new book, but create a copy. And that will create a brand new workbook with the invoice sheet in it, which we can then save as a separate file. Now my invoice template only contains one sheet. Sheet one, your workbook may contain many more sheets, but I'm going to refer to the sheet via its code name, which is the name that appears here. It is the most reliable way of referring to a sheet name. You can refer to it with the tab name invoice, but someone might change that. Or you can refer to it with its position, but that might change as well. So this name here doesn't change. We're going to say sheet1.copy. So if I run this code as it is, you'll see that it creates a new book. It's called book six, and it's got that worksheet in it. Now our next step would be to delete this button. We don't want this button on the actual invoice. So I'll just close that down. Don't save. Now the way to delete that would be to say active sheet dot shapes collection of shapes within that sheet. Now the name of the shape is the default name command button one and that you'll see up here as part of the sub procedure name. So if I just copy this name, paste it in here, close the bracket, and I want to delete it. Right, let's run this code and see if it works. Let's see what I've got. So I've got book seven now, but I've got no button on it. I'll delete this. File. So everything's going very well so far. But then I want to save that workbook that we've created with a specific file name. And if you remember, that's the concatenation of the invoice number and the customer name. Now, there's actually two things I want to do to that workbook that we've created. I want to save it, but I also want to close it. So because there's two things, I'm going to say with active workbook. Now I'll indent dot 
save as. And the first property I'm going to use is the file name property. And that needs to include the path. That's the path for the folder that we're saving this workbook in and the file name. If you remember, the file name is the concatenation of the invoice number and the customer name, comma. And I'm also going to specify the file format as normal Excel workbook rather than macro enabled. So I need to use that parameter as well. File format. And the file format is 51. I will explain that. What I'll do is I'll bring this web page up. I'll leave a link of this web page in the description of this video. But these are all the values you can use file format so you can see that 51 is open xml workbook 52 would be open excel workbook macro enabled so that's why i've used 51. the second thing i want to do with this new workbook is close it so dot close and then i can say end with so let's run this code as it is first of all i'm just going to go back to excel so if I change this to something obvious like the new customer. OK, let's go back to Visual Basic Editor and run the macro. And you get this warning that comes up. The following features cannot be saved in a macro free workbook. To save a file with these features, click no and then choose macro enable. To continue saving as macro free, click yes. And that you can see is the default. So basically what we want to do is suppress these message boxes so that they're automatically dealt with, essentially. And the yes is by default clicked. And the way to do that is to turn display alerts off. Now I'm going to do that up here. So we'll say application dot display alerts equals false. Now we better turn them back on end of the macro. True. Right, let's try the macro again. And if I show that folder, you can see I get 1009, the new customer, as though it has worked. OK, back to the Visual Basic Editor. So these steps I haven't been following with you very well. So let's put them in the correct place here. Create a copy of the invoice sheet in a new workbook. We've done that and we deleted the command button. Save the new workbook to a specified invoice folder with the proper file name and save as a .xlsx file, which is what we did there. And we've also closed the invoice file. I'll put that up there as well. So the next step is to display a message box with the next invoice number. And we can do that with message box in quotation marks, your next invoice number is concatenated with the value stored in the invoice number variable plus one. Then I've got to update the invoice number on the template. So that'll be range D3 equals invoice number plus one and then i want to save that update to the workbook so this workbook dot save so this is to the template okay so i think i finished the code there i'm just going to save it and close down visual basic editor close this new workbook down so let's see if it works bring up my little folder so I'm going to type another new customer here. It's the customer name. And let's click on Save Invoice. And we get another new customer. And the invoice number is automatically being incremented. OK, that's all I wanted to cover in this particular video. You can download this workbook from the link in the description below. I'll also leave a copy of the code in the description below. But if you have found this useful, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe, and I'll see you next video.